Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode three of the Auto Cycle Bill. So one of the first things I want to tell you about, I bought first a Ninja 250 rear sway bar. This guy right here. Unfortunately, it is bent, so we're not gonna be able to use that one, but I did pick up another one off of an SD650, and we're gonna go ahead and use that swing arm instead. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do in order to get this where we need it to be a roller is we need to get this mounted to the frame. In order to do that, we need to make some brackets. Uh, we know this is four inches up on here, so we're gonna take, draw that out. That's four inches, just so we know a reference point. And then for the pivot shaft itself, right here, I'm gonna pull it out. And then we're gonna measure it out, see exactly what its diameter is. and it's sitting right at uh, 25 millimeters. It's sitting right at 18 millimeters. So after I get this all catted up, we're gonna go and send it off to get laser cut. Once we get those laser cut pieces back in, we're gonna take, put our shaft through it all, pull it together, stick it on there, put some tack welds on it, and that will get it on there for a mounting point. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get this off the pallet, get it just sitting on the jacks itself. And going from there, we'll get the suspension back on. And as soon as our wheels come back in, we'll put those on the side there.
way we have to jack up this lower control arm so that way this pin is able to slide in and hold it all together. Let's go get our wheels. So they look pretty good. Mount stretch on them. Rims are pretty lightweight for 15.4 pounds. The next thing we're gonna do, mount them up on there, and then we're gonna take and get it all straight so we can roll it around on the ground. This is with a caliper right here. It's beautiful, that's exactly what I wanted. Eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some lowering springs because right now this amount of ground clearance right here, that's just a little too much for my take. Next thing I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and uh, this whole area right here, I wanna make and uh, do a mock-up battery. That way we can get an idea of where we want to position the battery and if we want to move it down a little bit beneath the frame and do a little drop pan for that or if we want to just do a level pan across the entire bottom. I said 96 volts. Why? Because more voltage, more better. Actually, this might work right here. Looks like my legs aren't going to be hitting the battery at all. So that makes it super easy. Think what we'll do is we'll do a fiberglass case that's gonna go over the top of this and then slope it down right here. That's actually surprising. I, I thought this was gonna come up a lot higher than it is, so uh, makes it easy on us with fabrication.
this guy needs to be in the same orientation as this pivot point right here. It's pretty easy because we can use our frame as a reference point for where this guy needs to be in correlation to this guy. So we we'll just need to measure from the frame to the center point of it. So we'll take and weld a piece of stock from the inside right here to about right here. And then that's gonna come up at an angle all the way up to this edge. That's gonna provide us some rigidity, keep this thing flexing. And it'll also provide me a place to put our feet right here. For resin, you don't want to be touching resin directly with your hands. This is water soluble resin, so we're going to just uh, rinse it off. That'll get the majority of the resin out, and then afterwards, we'll wipe it down with some uh, isopropyl alcohol. Let's go ahead and take this out of a curing chamber. that lip right here keep it from sliding back out and then we'll take these guys just like that and then so all we do is just pull it down and then hold it in place for us so we'll cut this right here That's going to be a wrap for this episode, and I'll catch you all on the next one.